adapting to understanding all these things. And I feel I was thinking about it uh, this afternoon and I was like, okay, maybe in a year, I think I will go faster through all these things. Uh, but yes, it would be, I mean, at least uh, um, it would be really cool that um, we find some ways, you know, to to share and maybe, uh, you know, contribute or help each other or something like that. That'd be awesome. I mean, I, I appreciate it. Like, affordances are always there because there's so many billions of people and um, no one does it all we all learn in our own way and that's the task is to engage everybody in like science and art and society where they are instead of one or ten hypothetical years later yes but you also need to learn how to swim you know yeah, I think, well, and, and, and um, yeah, Desai or Actim or whatever, it is like being treading water sometimes, but mm-hmm. and yeah. more gets built as we continue. Exactly. So, so yes, yeah, so, so for Satori and Nick, you know, what is was also super interesting is that uh, Daniel is working on Desai and he's also an artist and the problem, the problem <laughs> Is that because of his biology background, so he might understand Deb in a too, uh, you know, serious way. Uh, so that's also where I think for me it was a very interesting inspiration because uh, to try to design an art-based research lab uh, on the same way that you design this decentralized science lab. So that that's uh, because the idea of an art-based lab is that you produce some uh, i mean whatever you produce in the desi lab you can produce it but by working uh, on art practice as well i think it would be cool to hear daniel's understanding of the dynamic energy budget um, model okay uh well also nice to meet you satori and nick to voice speak but I would know that gesture anywhere. Um, um, I, I, well, with what you just said about the art lab, that just made me think about transferable ways of organizing, transferable and, and integratable ways of organizing with like art, science, innovation, impact, like ways that currently have very different practices and um, silos. One aspect is like, yeah, what does an art lab like and integrating science and art in new ways? And then the um, the biology of the energy, I think about just like, I don't know, an ecosystem and, you know, it rains and carbohydrates enter the system and the plants fatten up and then something eats them and there's like a dynamic balance of energy in the ecosystem and then in our own body like the muscles burn through the glycogen and then the liver starts pumping out carbohydrates and it it has a lot of resilience because it's not just like moving stacks of silver from one vault to another there's like this transformation and and, um, dynamics to like how the ecosystem and how the body are regulating energy and our organizational structures are not there yet. Okay, so that resonates with what we were talking together, Nick, isn't it? Um, in what way? I'd love to hear what why you because, think so uh, because you were i was and i mean my understanding is that you know like this energy um, flow within our bodies and within the uh, ecosystem or the society structure and um, that's what i understood from daniel that uh, we are not yet there in terms of organization 
in uh, having uh, structures in terms of society that would resonate with this flow of energy. Okay, maybe I'm not clear. No, 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 I get what you're saying. I just wanted to hear like <laughs> the full thought. That's all. Sorry <laughs> for asking, but uh, yeah, I'd say yeah, it aligns with what we were talking about. Um, I think especially in like participation in DAOs, um, it's it's so easy to just like just like what Chapman's been saying to try and create efficiencies so that you know the organization itself will flourish but what does flourish even mean um but if we how do i say this the difference in working in the omega is that the focus is on like the organisms inside of the omega group versus the the output of omega group if that makes sense it, but we don't have like actual yeah like clear structures of processing of all this information um how do we process the energy flow into the group like for example in in the form of money we don't we don't have any of that f created yet and that's basically what we're trying to do here in this working group trying to figure out how that could work out so try to figure out how Deb is integrated within the Omega working group, isn't it? Yeah, as like, uh, like a testing ground, I guess you could say. Because like the whole of the TEC itself is an experiment, but Omega itself is also like an experiment within this experiment. So we can, we we have ourselves as um, people to test what we're working on basically and that's i guess where the, the the art practice comes into it nick what other kinds of energy flows are coming into tec or omega other than uh, like anything related to fiat or crypto like those are flows but what other flows are we interested in um we we do want more uh token engineering um knowledge i guess you could say like people who are actually practicing token engineers we would love for them to be able to share their knowledge but they are they're always short on time and there's so many people always just like trying to capture their attention and energy as well um so the people that come in here wanting to learn about token engineering and wanting to be around other token engineers they're not necessarily um, getting that and therefore it feels like TEC is not actually it's actually it feels like TEC isn't actually becoming like a shelling point for token engineering because like the token engineers aren't here <laughs> they're not here they're out there doing work they're too busy to be here so we're trying to figure out like how can we how can we create a different like model for um, participation organizing I guess in this case around token engineering so that we can have like a a healthy environment where there's this exchange happening instead of like I don't know the way I see it token engineers are like they're this special organisms and everyone's just like reaching for them like it feels like a bunch of vultures like waiting to peck at the token engineers but how can we make it so that it's like a yeah, like a beautiful balance. Yeah, environment where the token engineer themselves are just like, oh, I have so much energy I'd love to share because I have so much energy. I'm not being pulled in all those all sorts of places because I have to make money or whatever. I have to make someone else lots of money. I just want to share the knowledge that I have and then other people can learn from them. Does that answer your question or did that not make sense? Yeah, no, that, that, that makes a ton of sense. Like, I just think about like Complexity Weekend where th there can, these types of spaces can have an uncanny valley between like beginning, abounding in energy, attention, maybe they're having a few hours per day. Um, but then the, the other side of the table, which is uh, like, the, that that is people who are often overcommitted. Um, and so, 
and there's limitations and, and finiteness. So like how to structure that energy flow where I, I'm kind of writing the Omega channel, like just, just little notes, but like what? Sorry to interrupt, but would, would it be okay if we share it, if you type in a dynamic energy budget thread, I'll tag oh, you oh. in it. Okay, um, thank just, you. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of channels. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Oh, got it. All right. So, yeah, what are the interfaces or membranes that energy is flowing across? Because, like, the liver and the muscle, it's not mm -hmm. just about carbohydrates. There's also, like, signaling molecules. And in the ecosystem, it's not just eating. There's, like, sound and there's like so there's there's rich interfaces and so how to end how to make that interface so that there can be a, a thriving multilateral relationship instead of 10 people looking for the i don't know <laughs> yeah okay i want to read go to the channel and think more that interface could be like the token engineering library and, well, I guess that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, and I think this comes down to like these other feedback loops or mechanisms of synthesizing information, uh, holding space for for like connections and like this kind of like area of peer to peer to peer like talking and 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 connecting in this way, and then also like coupling that up with like you know using the different mediums that we have right. And using them in like this like weird coordinated uh, sense of the tools that we have, and then kind of where we're like have that blank space of 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 what we're talking about. And I think this is like I think what I think what we're getting to is the the Figma board map because I was looking at it, and then even you using um, the dot and the arrow to create like that loop back uh, um, is interesting. That's what I, I've just been thinking about that kind of stuff lately. And and then, like, the different roles, but also to creating functions for them to be, like, meaningful to the whole of, like, you know, whether what, what Dogadas was talking about, um, kind of um, the curator, monitor, and then, like, holding that space so that whatever could emerge of the, the wisdom circle of, like, us four together and where it overlaps and starts to synthesize and make sense. Yeah, anyways. I, I mean, there's something I... Um, just, um, when I, I'm not sure I understand everything. Um, when Daniel was mentioning, for example, the sound as a way to enrich interaction in ecosystem, so to me, this refer to the transdisciplinary work. Uh, um, and so Satori, you were mentioning the library, saying that the library would be the place where we connect all different type of work. Yes. Yes. Maybe I misunderstood something. I'm just wondering, like, like um, so don't hesitate to let me know. Um, and, and also, uh, uh, Nick, when you are talking about how we can have token engineering uh, uh, being happy to be in tech, so it means that this is not an Omega problem, it's a pro because I never heard really about that, so it's a, a problem of all the token engineering comments group, yes? Uh, I would say so, but I mean, even at Omega, like the subject matter experts who could share a lot of knowledge, they they can't, they aren't really participating in Omega that much. Other so than Dergadas and Letty. We have three. We have three. It's, it's not bad. Yeah, but we had, we had a lot more people who used to participate and then they don't anymore. Um, okay. Because of various reasons. But maybe it would be good to like go back to your agenda where you know, as part of the experiment, we start sharing why we're flowing energy towards here, how that, how we're planning to transmute that energy, and then why you wanted to flow that energy yeah. to here in the first place, and then we can kind of use ourselves to yeah. match it and with a dynamic so, energy budget model. 
so Daniel, maybe I give you a little bit of context. I mean, I don't know if you need it or not, but, but uh, I mean, from my understanding, it, but just the story that I met Sebnem through with the steward here, and I met her with, with, within, with the Motion Dao, um, a group of, you know, dance tech, art tech artists, and then, um, you know, also connecting in Carnell, and, um, and, and uh, she introduced me here. Um, and um, uh, so I think it's good to have an overview of what Omega is, you know. I mean, because I'm, I'm just saying that because for me it, it's um, it has been difficult to understand it quite right. I feel that if we give a context, it gets faster. No, no. Can, can I? Do yeah, that? definitely. I would love to know what what niche we're in. Okay, so Omega, if I my, and so Nick and Satori, let, let me know if I'm saying right or not. So Omega is the group within Token Engineering Commons that is um, working on, more on the ethics of Token Engineering. So I guess already Token Engineering Commons is already more ethical, <laughs> but this is the ethics within the ethics. And, and, um, and so... This group, there's this uh, consilience library that is a first uh, experiment experiment for all the groups. So I don't know, Satori, if you want to explain what is a consilience library. Oh, um, well, the the library is the project I, I guess that Omega got funded for, and it's basically um, using the crypto economic flower. And the hope is, or what we're, we're going towards is uh, the transdisciplinary um, nature of that, of where the flower like overlaps. And so that that's a broad, you know, s subject, which is, you know, psychology, um, game theory, whatever other things that we, we could put into um, that. But uh, what kind of like sparked me is to bring in the art aspect. And this is where the overlap kind of happens in this little area. But yeah, um, so we're trying to get the curators for, you know, uh, token engineers in the field to um, have some curations in in the library, but also to we're hoping to have research, which is right here, the, the DEB um, energy budget is kind of a blossoming research project to focus on art and um, look at different ways to store our energies as we use them in this area. I think, yeah. The library is supposed to find, I mean, to be like an experiment of how we would flow the, the values through it. Yeah. And will it be uh, like a physical something or? The, I, um, the website, I think we're, I think the, <laughs> the thing is to build out the website. And I think like Notion is becoming like the resource uh, repository, if I'm correct. That's kind of how the flow's going, Nick. You know, like all the actual mechanics. Um, so it could be, I think the goal is to start off with digital. So we have like an actual website that will be the library. And um, Steph's working on that. I also want to work on that. And Steph is also working on possibly uh, linking his own personal project like the art studio as like a physical way of interacting with the library so maybe in his art studio you can access the resources there or something or you can borrow resources but i don't know but yeah there is it could be physical but i think the goal is to start off with digital and right now the what the website does exist but it's not like a finished first version of the product, if that makes sense. Now, thanks for sharing the um, Figma. I'm, I'm looking at the the continent. <laughs> it it just makes oh, me yeah. think of um, I, um, like it reminds me of D Day. <laughs> like there's a beachhead <laughs> and an onboarding. <laughs> And, um, but, you know, whatever the opposite of that is, but that's, that is the, um, that is the pivot from, like, weaponry to livingry. 
and that like those are some of that's just what i think about but not like it's like a war on anything but just there's the there's the beachhead and a, a forward operating camp and then there's like the documentation along the way vision log and then that is like blazing one path and then like this is like sort of a, a, a meta library i it could include many kinds of like things but then when somebody wants to do like a smaller knowledge engineering task maybe that is 80 percent aligned with what this initial group does and then maybe they can just really quickly pull that 80 for git and then have a ton of their energy and attention to allocate to take to doing that last 20 and then the next 20 percent So like, I'm not sure I'm understanding. So you're saying like having something like this so they can just look and then they, so that they spend looking at this and getting like 80% of the information they need. So then the other 20% of the energy is just actually spent on doing or? For like the, the expedition, the curated expedition log of this initial onboarding mission may mm -hmm make protocols, lab protocols, like standard operating protocols. Like, we're going to do for the first time, we're going to do um, this kind of a art show. And then that's like the research in the frontier. And then if it, it's documented along the way, then that serves as like a way to do asynchronous knowledge transfer, which doesn't require the synchronous time, like of the performance artists, mm -hmm. because it's like, there was magic in how we set it up. But like a lot of the stuff that you wouldn't know to think about to set up a performance art event or like just some other tips and wish things that we had wished we had done etc like asynchronous helps alleviate the limited time mm -hmm. so it's like and you know, maybe there's a scribe on this mission somebody who loves taking notes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then yeah and then again like a, a different project where somebody wants to do a library on, um on some other Somebody wants to curate some other epistemic garden, not the okay. consilience library. But then that project has more of like, it's like, oh, we've done PCR in this lab before. We haven't done that gene, but somebody in our lab has done PCR. Yeah. So that's actually exactly the, oh, sorry. No, no. Okay, so I, uh, okay, I just say that and uh, after you, uh, sorry, Nick. But that's I mean, okay. to me, my understanding is that it really relates to this idea of valuing the process. And it's more than taking notes. The way that you document the process can be a, a creation by itself. And this is exactly mm -hmm. what we start doing here. So then we're going to tell you what we are doing here. So I'm sorry, Nick. Oh, I was just going to say, that's exactly why I made this, actually. <laughs> so then you can see, like, okay, imagine we're pirates, we landed on this island, we're digging for treasure. The current treasure we're aiming to dig for is to have, like, a a good library onboarding flow. So far, as we arrive, like, as we make our journey towards the destination, we've we've found a couple coins on the way and that's like the idea for onboarding flow idea for curation flow idea for learning by embodying flow um so then just by looking at this you know okay if i want to join this expedition i just call, i just join the call here this is where they're at obviously they've not reached the destination but i can also check the log to see what's going on i can see what the treasure we're digging for is i can see where they're doing the work and yeah, I guess the the art performance in this case would be like the movement of the participants through this map as they make their journey. And then eventually as we come up with like, you know, once we've, we've we finished gathering this treasure, we move on to something else, maybe working on something else. Then we have like a new treasure to dig for and then that's a new journey. And then eventually the finished product is the map of our experiences as the onboarding team. Okay, but if you compare to to the dynamic energy budget and the idea of metabolism, you, you you know you take you take subtract and you give back to the mm -hmm. ecosystem, but there's not treasure at the end. There is a death at the end. 
that, that is like a gift <laughs> of your of your organism to the ecosystem uh, uh, mm. and and uh, for me one inspiration was really to um, uh, value the process very strongly and in the way of how it interconnects and, um, and then it creates some small projects or small treasures around along the road you know if I use your mm -hmm. metaphor uh, uh, and um, and maybe uh, you know sometimes it, there is one uh, a new project starting so it's a new way and a new treasure mm -hmm. So that that's a different way than you know. This is like this idea of metabolism. I would think it in a different way than a camp and a direction and some steps. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, this doesn't really work in the energy stuff at all. It's more like um, I just wanted to express creatively while also like, okay, how can we communicate the information I need to. But yeah. Um, what what if um, how, um like thinking about foraging, attention and information foraging and like physical foraging, like maybe there's um maybe it, it's a two day journey. So then you need to prepare a camp or you need to start tending a garden to the left side, mm -hmm. and then that needs to be like in balance. Maybe the island has seasons, so it's like oh we're going to be able to make the ascent if we leave it this time and this cue looks good. We're going to have the energy to make this ascent. But like we don't, we, um, and then yeah, I t totally agree. Like it can be a lot richer than just taking notes. And I think art, in that sense, is like it's a it's an ultimate dimension compression, like, ritual and art, and it's so compressed. The meaning of Hamlet isn't in Hamlet. It's so compressed that it requires the active engagement. To like unpack and create the meaning and i think that's the paradigm shift between like being um a content consumer and to, to being an active participant in a community because there's people who will listen to podcasts for hours per week maybe even about token engineering and crypto but then to have them take the active turn and leave one emoji um join one one-on-one -on -one conversation just to find out what's happening it sometimes seems like that's like a bridge too far and so that's like the active turn that is part of the onboarding process mm. yeah that's, that's actually like, super helpful yeah that's like the first like step right to, to get that curiosity and have it um, mm -hmm. as an action later in whatever form maybe to like go back to focusing on the energy budgets so you were asking questions daniel in the in the chat um you're like where do we expect and prefer energy to flow and why um tomorrow's call or not tomorrow today's call and uh in about half an hour about mega i think shabnam's going to be asking such questions like what are we what are we trying to become efficient for that will answer that but also we have the data here that everyone uh generously shared of basically like what energizes them and what drains them of energy so we do have some information of the participants um here about like the energy going in and also like what what is draining them of energy from participating as well so we have that information like i said in the chat the only thing really we're missing in terms of like um data to match like dynamic energy budget model is like um like more updated data like in the everyday what are you spending your energy on why are you spending it on that how are you how are you using that energy so for example right now we're using our energy on joining this call and discussing with each other um around the dynamic energy budget why are we doing that how much energy are we actually putting in are we focused on this call like stuff like that we don't have a way to collect that data yet okay <clears throat> 
so there's my understanding of what you say, Nikki, that there's different levels of acknowledging energy. And one is also our individual um, level. And um, we've been discussed in the past, you know, as energy uh, in a more anthropologic way <laughs> and uh, uh, as a fuel for society. Uh, and uh, so the, the parallel with, um, you know, an art practice, there's, there's something about engaging your own subjectivity. So you are not natural as a person. So it would make sense to, as we suggested in the agenda, to kind of check in with um, where we are in terms of energy. Um, and then... Uh, uh, and then we can move on, I mean, a bit quickly. Um, okay. So we can maybe do this quickly in terms of, of you know, like a personal checking because we wanted to do it. Uh, then there's the conversation to go on with what we started, which I continue to think is a good uh, uh, framework to work on uh, Bataille and uh, some other author and then to um, have a kind of artistic practice of flowchart uh, that I'd love to have it uh, also physically. And um, and then there's also the, the uh, question of um, Sebnem of how it can uh, help, I mean, not forgetting the dynamic budget and how it can relate to to the uh, omega and uh, the resource allocation oh um, i was muted <laughs> did that make sense to everyone especially mataji who is new here as well so right now what we're gonna do is share um how much energy like maybe rate it out of 100 does that make sense do you have today and then how much energy are you investing right now in this call? Like how much energy does that, um, are you flowing towards this call? And then how are you planning to use that energy, I guess, that you've flowed asking here? The question, yeah. So I can start, you know, just okay. quickly asking this question of uh, our own energy is um, something I never thought about it before I heard Nick talking about it all the time. And uh, each time I'm totally depressed. Oh, <laughs> God. Day, I keep thinking <laughs> about it and it makes me feel better. <laughs> like, I'm, oh, I'm going to do all that. Uh, and then I also think that there's something really uh, depending on people's nature, or maybe even physiology. I think I, I'm a person that is not good in managing my own energy. I'm always going too far. And uh, mm. uh, that's another thing I want to, to say. Uh, and uh, um, also um, by slowly acknowledging it because we've talked about it it's very interesting for me to to think about it this way for myself um, and last thing i wanted to share because when we discussed with nick uh, the, the past days is also the fact that for me connecting and being a group is definitely a source of energy so like being here for me, mm, I mean, so it's cool. also a source of energy. Um, voila. I, I'm just saying this for now. If someone else would like to share personal <laughs> Actually, it would be cool it's to easy. answer it's these questions. Mm -hmm. It would be cool if you could answer these questions. Like the, the one, the question... The so now i'm lost between the figma board and the question from daniel yeah yeah i just it's it's almost it's basically the same i just added an extra one ah okay um how much energy out of 100 do we have today so do i have to answer this question okay so um so for me again 
I'm not thinking this way. I'm not thinking <laughs> in counting in general, you know? Mm. <laughs> I mean, so this way of counting for me is so American first. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's also a way of, of um, you know, that that's, it's also this way of organizing and structuring everything as in a kind of efficient way. So that's, mm. for me, that's still very close to hypercapitalism. Mm. Uh, so it's hard. What, what, for, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm reacting as I say. Oh, why mm -hmm. are you asking me to count like this? I have no idea. I mean, yes, I can tell you my life and uh, that uh, uh, it was very hard for me to be here today because my daughter has her baccalaureate, it's her birthday tomorrow, I'm going to Munich, uh, uh, many other things. I had uh, important business lunch meeting and, and um, but I'm now present and it's uh, 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 well, uh, I mean, uh, um, what do you say, uh, you know, like a uh, protected environment so that makes me feeling good i don't w lose my energy and, and um, so how much energy i'm investing in this call uh, the one i have but again it's a matter of flow it's not a matter of stock that's really what i believe that there's an exchange each time something is happening so i give i get and how are we planning to use this energy? So we try. There, I'm okay to be a bit stricter. <laughs> and this is why we had a tentative agenda. But also, it's very important to take the opportunity and listen to what is happening. And for me, this is very similar to how I feel when I'm in a dance studio, uh, you know, doing some work with other performers. You know, okay, we are. I'm listening to what's happening. So now, like Daniel, you know, is uh, contributing, and it's very interesting. So that's good to welcome this. Anybody else? <coughs> yeah, um, I'm similar in the in the respect is like. I don't know about the the value, <laughs> you know, the 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 number of uh, my energy level, but it, it goes and flows. Like I think in the beginning, I I was uh, not a totally um, hundred percent of my energy here, but as um, things started to go, and this is always happens with my own process, um, the engagement and the feedback, and then getting like sparked in my own self of kind of the feedback of what Daniel was saying about um, the the island kind of sparked my own energy to get like focus and working out my own stuff um, but yeah, what also is kind of funny is that my actual real first name is Daniel too so um, it's always cool. oh, that's <laughs> yeah that's what the T stands for um, but um, let's see how much am I? Oh, so what I'm investing right now is is a hundred percent now. <laughs> uh, how is that energy used? Um, and I think this is also good to like get my energy, um, like storing and using to get into the next meeting. So that's good. Um, and I think the flowing back is is the the feedback loops that we're talking about of like, you know, there's certain mo moments where maybe all my energy is not here, but then and something pulls me back in um but yeah i think just us holding this the space going back to what jane was saying is helps the energy focus <laughs> if that makes sense i don't know cool matty you would you like to share if you if if you could rate how much energy out of 100 today or if you don't believe in quantifying your energy levels that's okay too. sure sorry i just i saw the title of this um i'm really interested in this dynamic energy budget uh stuff it's uh, I'm, i've been thinking along kind of similar lines i think but i don't actually really know exactly what it is so i just came to listen but um um i guess my energy today is somewhere around 85 i'm feeling pretty energized uh, I'm, right now I'm 
Uh, I'm working mostly on the praise uh, system in TEC, so that's where all of, most of my energy is going. And um, yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure how to answer the others. I'm very interested in this idea because I keep thinking about uh, I keep coming back to mutual credit and how in mutual credit systems the credit limit is a kind of like a reflection of like your potential energy and then the actual spent credit line is like a reflection of like consumed energy and I, I keep thinking about how like uh, that could be a way to have organizational capacity be this kind of like dynamic energy budget thing but I'm just actually trying to learn more about what this is about <laughs> What is a mutual credit? Mutual credit's like kind of another uh, way of thinking about money systems. It's like everybody has a, a balance of zero and um, everyone has a credit limit and you can draw down to that credit limit so then your balance goes into the negative uh, when you when you can when you like consume stuff or buy stuff and then when other people buy stuff from you, uh, your credit goes back up and can go up into the positive. Um, so it's been used in some contexts as like, like it was, I guess there was a bunch of movements uh, for it in like kind of in the UK in the 80s and 90s where they were starting like local community mutual credit circles as kind of a way to like, kind of like give liquidity to people, like allow people to spend a little bit of money and kind of set like the circular economy thing where like, you know, people are incentivized to spend their mutual credit within the network because that's the only place they can spend it. But I keep thinking of uh, maybe an extension of that uh, where it could be used, not basically be used for internal organizational planning of like of like being able to see like where do we have capacity and how much capacity do we have and then also for intra-organizational planning. That reminds me of like, I think the original I say XRP or something like that. I'll I'll link the I'll link a, an article in the dynamic energy budget thread and I guess let me know what you think of it if, if Yeah, please do. Okay, so for me um I'd say my energy today well, is pretty great. Um I actually have been low energy lately, but today is real great. I'd say like 95 or something. I am I'm, I'm it takes a lot of energy for me to be in calls, actually, but um, I'm investing like probably like 30 of my energy um, just to be here. Uh, it, yeah, like I, I was saying to Jean this morning, a lot of input uh, can be draining for me. How is that energy use? Um, Note taking. I guess exchanging IG ideas, planning to use this energy on creating an economic system around energies. This energy flow back to me, yes, from the sh the like, even though it drains me of energy to listen to the input. It, it does energize me eventually once I have processed the input. Um, after like processing the knowledge you all share in the call. From there we can kind of... Well, what do you think of the information shared? And maybe if not everyone's familiar with the dynamic energy budget, we could do like a summary or something. Like it's about... And then we can look at what the information shared and then we can we can be like, okay, well, if we were each an organism, how did we use energy? How did we process energy? What do you think of that? Yeah, that could be a question. I mean, I, I mean, first for, for Matty, we can, you know, tell you very quickly what we're working on. But, uh... Like to get an inspiration for this biological model that is, uh, uh, you know, about uh, uh, it's a system that is supposed to be applied to any type of living organism. So it's about metabolism. And so we use it as an inspiration, like a biomimicry, 
to imagine a, an economic system that would value the process rather than the end product. And, and so for me, when I, I, I hear and I was reading um, uh, Daniel about mutual credit and the limit is reflection of the potential energy. So this, I'm not sure I understand what does it mean, but this idea of spent credit consumed uh, and uh, with the reference to the 80s and 90s communities, for me, I would uh, imagine that um, um, this metabolism based economic system would value the action and not the consumption. Uh, and it's also the connection and the interaction but it's uh, this is what we would value um, and um, also so we, we can um, okay I'm sorry Nick because I'm I'm just I'm going to another direction direction that what you just suggested but we can go back to it but um, I, I uh, also, I'm being in part of a metabolism, the idea of this center from ourselves, which means how can we understand our system or our society uh, from a system perspective and not from um, on from us as a center. But now we can answer your question. Did I capture your question correctly? Um, where did you write it? Because I'm on the Discord chat. And, oh. Uh, and it's on 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 the uh, on the. Uh, okay, I'm checking. Just the. Uh, how can we understand on, our system? Okay. Oh. It's, uh, how can we understand our society from a system perspective with with us as a center? Is that what you said? No, it's. It's the opposite. Oh. I mean, for me, it's really to decenter. I mean, I feel that um, if we are me metabolism, you know, we are part. And for me, a metabolism it means human and environment together. And and um, then we have to to how can we think about us being part of a system, which means not thinking, you know. Mm, okay. It's not a subject object. Right. So how we can how can we still continue to think without being subject? Hmm. I actually started um the reason why I haven't finished the the um a curse share book is because I got distracted by this Chinese medicine book and in Chinese medicine they talk about how well they look at everything as like a system within system within system within systems so like even even the observer so for example like the chinese medicine practitioner even their observation affects the system of the patient so Super interesting. would it be would it be yeah. right to look at us as separate from what we're observing do you know what i mean i think it, it would be cool to explore that because like it's kind of like what we're doing now the way they the way they learned about um medicine they they weren't allowed to dissect human bodies so they had to just observe everything and that's kind of like what we're doing right like we're not taking things out of the system by being like okay tell me everything we're we're kind of just observing what via our existences and experiences and from there we're share we're sharing ideas i guess you can say or formulating theories and what could work um okay I, I i would like to answer something but i'm not sure i, I want to be sure i understood what you said that that can you repeat uh, um i mean this idea of, the, of you know, like uh, that viewing is part of, I mean, is already a system and it influences, etc. So, but by, by I think documenting on the process and creating this thing, that would be a way to decenter. I think <laughs> I understood. I, I, I agree. Action uh, is it's coming from our our own 
position. So that is the view from the inside, like being at the origin of your own egocentric frame. But action is like what breaks us beyond that. Like when the ant is modifying the pheromones, moving the nest, like you're contributing to something outside yourself through stigmergy. And so when people don't act, then they're ruminating purely. But then through action and through engagement and attention, which is mental action, then we can actually not have these like recursive thought spirals. So I think like it's why it's like action, imbuing action and like even within the uh, like the or like the metabolic chart that I posted in the channel. Um, that's not an org chart. Like those are transformations. The edges are. And then there's like the anaplerotic and cataplerotic, which is like, they're, they're funny words, but it's like, what fills up the cycle and what is draining the cycle? Mm. And so if we're just like, well, pour more in, prevent more from leaving, then <laughs> the organism d actually dies. So what is the cycle? And then what are the reactions and the interfaces and the sort of ways that it can be steered and sculpted a little bit um so but how can we measure the actions if we're so against the measure of action because it feels like capitalistic or something to measure the action you can measure the interaction i'll i'll give um a thought before i leave but but thanks everybody for having me and i'm, I'm happy to come at times where it works um i think part of the approach there um First off, it is to clarify that through, it's a yes and with measurements. Measurement does not replace the unmeasurable. It's like um, a partially observable system. And so that's like what um, at 37 um, behavioral modeling is about observables. So those are the aspects of the system that are like on chain, in the discord, like modifications of the niche are behavior. And then there's the unobservables. And so that's the direction that we can go towards with the joint modeling of observables and unobservables and not just say we're trying to maximize the number of emojis that people leave, like not just that sort of naked behavioral engineering, but we could think about consensual engagement with cognitive niches so that people feel how they want to feel, but also certain work has to be done. Thanks, everybody, and I'll, I'll see you all soon. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank very you nice. For yeah, that was Bye. enlightening. <laughs> yes, amazing. Very, very, very interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah. Lot of praise. Thanks, guys. I have to, I have to step out too. Sorry to derail yeah. a little bit, but no, I'm gonna keep cool. watching. No, you again. didn't. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't. Okay. Thank Thanks. Uh, I, I just catched the last part and I all I heard is how awesome this call was. I'm so sad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and actually we forgot to record it. That's I, I think bad. Satori records yeah. every call. Yeah, I, right? I have yeah. Wow. The magic of Satori. Actually, yeah, I'm going to praise you for that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but yeah, like, like the... The dual system is like those un unobservables are kind of like like stamped by the the NFT in a sense, and then like the relationship of that oh. with the whole is kind of like the residual energy effect. I don't know. It's something like that. But yeah. I mean, that's like this little graph on the chat. Do you see it? Here, I'll stop sharing so it's not confusing. You know, on the dynamic energy budget, so you have a graph. In the thread. Yeah. Uh, yes, on the dynamic energy budget thread, sorry. Uh, in Discord, you have this graph. And my understanding was that Daniel said that, you know, that's a cycle that you have taken. I mean, this was exactly what Deb is. I mean, I have no idea what Deb is, but my understanding of that. And and uh, and he was talking about you know measuring the observable and the non-observable in, in terms of behaviors, you know, instead of measuring quantity. That would make, you know, that would include this question of where we see from. 
I mean, I'm happy to listen to what he said again in the conclusion because I found it so strong. And, uh, yeah. And uh, very right. The only thing that the little gra graph that he gave us that is something from his biology uh, background, you know, it's really nice. <laughs> But I would love to have projects, you know, that we can use this kind of framework for our project. I mean, this is, I, I tried to do it for my art production thing, you know. And this idea of replacing, um, you know, quantity by what we observe and we cannot observe and action. and. and there's something very strong for me is that I'm really tired that people still think that consuming goods is something good in terms of politics in general, you know, that we should really disrupt this totally.